Uh, if anybody's tuning in right off the bat, it's a little bit different for me today. I'm doing it directly off of our laptop. So if you can, oh, there we go. Now we're definitely live. <laughs> okay. If you can hear me, if you can see me okay, if you are tuning in, go ahead and leave a comment or a like. Uh, let me know that you can see and hear okay. I'm going to pull it up on my phone too, just in case. Might be an easier way to see our comments. Um, I have it pulled up on a laptop today because I'm going to be talking about the three different species of redwoods that we have. And I know that I've talked a little bit about these three different species of redwoods and how incredible it is that you have these um, unique representatives from three different genuses, those of you guys who have been tuning in. But I want to give you guys some tools here today on how to actually tell those species apart. If you run into a giant sequoia versus a coast redwood versus a dawn redwood, how do I know what redwood I'm looking at? Um, so I'm going to give you some information on how to identify these species, and then at the end, if you're still sticking around, uh, we're going to have a little test. So I have a, um, an image of each, and I'm going to see if we, if we know, if we can figure out which one is which, and uh, how you guys do on that. So awesome. I'm seeing some comments coming in now. Hello, Rob. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Bud. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining in. Thanks for being here today. My name is Kyle. I'm a park interpretive specialist for California State Parks up on the North Coast Redwoods district. This is up on the far north coast of California. And today, as the Saturday usual, I am in Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park. Again, on the northern coast of California, this is part of Redwood State and National Park. Um, thank you guys all again so much for joining, and thank you all for doing your part shelter in place during COVID-19. I know it's difficult. Um, we're doing these live streams every day at three o'clock to try and help fill our mission for California State Parks to provide for the health, the inspiration, and the education of the public, I'm trying to give you a little bit of outdoor spaces, provide for your health, trying to inspire you when you are able to come back to these places to see some new places and maybe you'll learn some new things along the way as well. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Homework break. Oh, I'm sorry, Robin. During your homework break, I'm going to have a test for you, but it should be a really easy test and it should be super fun. Um, I'm going to talk about these different species and hopefully we'll give you some really good tools to tell them apart. So I am going to share my screen so that way you guys can see what I'm looking at. Uh oh, it looks like I cannot share my screen after I go live. That doesn't help. Okay, um, those of you guys who are tuning in, I'm going to end the stream really quick. I'm going to switch it over to the screen view so that way you can see what I'm looking at. And then when I post this, I'll stitch it all together so it'll be one continuous nice video. Um, Hang in there, people. I will be right back in just a moment. Sorry about this. Testing out some new ways to do things because, you know, we like to test our technology and see what we can do. I'll be right back. Hopefully you can now see and what I'm looking at, the endless tunnel of our um, of our live stream. There we go. So this is this is our live stream here broadcasting directly from Facebook. If you can hear and see me OK, please leave me a comment. I want to make sure that this is picking up my audio from the screen share. I'm going to see if I can pop it up on my phone as well. This is continuing from the start of the broadcast just a few minutes ago. Um, thank you for bearing with me and testing this technology. So I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me OK while I'm doing this screen share um, in this endless tunnel of mirrored screens. Thank you so much for bearing with me. All good. All right. That means you must be able to hear me. Awesome. 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 Thank you, Carol. I appreciate it. Yes, definitely trippy looking down this window. So here is what we've got. We have, um, we are looking at species in this group. Sequoia doya de. Please pardon my um, pronunciation of these scientific names is not going to be the most flawless, but this is essentially the subfamily that all three of our redwoods fall into. So the three groups that we're going to be looking at are the coast redwood. This is what we have up here in Northern California. We're going to be looking at giant sequoias. These are found inland near the Sierra Nevadas. And then we're going to be talking about the dawn redwood, which is found in China. So our three different species, all of them are in this subfamily sequoia. Doya, doya, day. <laughs> so this is essentially how or, um, everything is organized in taxonomic, uh, in taxonomy. You have um, these kind of broad categories that you put things in, and then as you get closer down to individual species, it gets narrower and narrower until you have a single thing that is the only species. So all three of the things that we're looking at are unique representatives of their genus. They are all in the same subfamily. Um, they're all sequoia trees, different types of sequoia trees, but you have three different genuses. You have um, sequoia dendron, giganticum, those are the giant sequoias, 
you have Meta Sequoia. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce the species name for Don Redwood. It's um, it's a little tricky, but um, Meta Sequoia is their genus, and then you have um, Sequoia, which is the redwoods, the coast redwoods that we have here. So all three of those species fall um, into this subfamily group. And what I found really interesting is that the category just above their subfamily, these sequoia trees, is essentially cypresses. So um, all these redwood trees are pretty closely related to cypress trees. And I have right here, um, this is all the relatives of cypress. This is basically a phylogenetic tree. This is how everything is related. This is really similar to like a family tree, if you have a family tree. And you can see our three species that we're looking at today, their genuses are listed right here. And since they are all the only representative of their genus, it just has their genus name and not their species names here. But you can see um, some of their close relatives all in this um, Cyprus family. It's really interesting. Another thing to point out um, for, for people who are not familiar with phylogenetic trees, which um, I wasn't super familiar with phylogenetic trees until I start to fall down these kind of research rabbit holes, so things that are branched directly together, you see that sequoia and sequoia dendron kind of are on the same arm of this branch, where metasequoia is a little bit more distantly related. So they are all related, call these sister groups, where they're dire directly um, attached to each other. And metasequoia is not as closely related to sequoia and sequoia dendron. So the coast redwood and the um, giant sequoia are more closely related than the dawn redwood. So a whole lot of um, dense information. I'm going to pop back over here and see. You guys can all see each other's comments too. Can hear you fine. Yes, loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. Giant sequoia redwood. Yes, bud. So you were probably at the um, the visitor center at Humboldt Redwoods. They have a dawn redwood planted there and a coast redwood. Um, and that's a really good thing to point out right off the bat that these three different species, one really easy way to tell them apart is that they don't grow in the same regions. Um, naturally, I will say. Naturally, they don't grow in the same regions. So, let's see. Here's my pictures here. So, we have um, here. This is a nice map. This is from NPS. Thank you, NPS, for letting me borrow your nice image. Um, this is the range with the coast redwoods, which we have here on the coast of California, the North Coast Redwoods District. We have coast redwoods growing along the coast. You can see they're kind of green line here. And then you have the giant sequoia range inland of here. Um, and the sequoias tend to grow in groves, and that's why they kind of have these little dots, these speckles, because um, they kind of facilitate an environment where they grow around each other, and they grow in these groves with these pockets of trees all growing together. Where you can see the coast redwoods range, they just like growing along the coast. They're kind of picky about having a good amount of fog, um, and their range today is 4% of their historic range. Um, with the climate, with deforestation, their range has been significantly reduced. They used to grow along the whole coast of California. Um, and now they kind of only grow up on the north coast of California. So, how do we tell these three trees apart? We have the coast redwoods, the giant sequoia, and the dawn redwoods. So let's start with the trees we have here, the coast redwoods. Um, this is what you probably all are most familiar with, especially if you live in California um, along the coast. These are the trees that we see. These are the forests that we broadcast from pretty regularly. Um, and a really good way to identify trees is to look at three main things, at least on the trees that we're looking at. They're conifers, meaning that they produce cones. Um, so the three main things to look at on these trees to be able to identify them is their bark, their needles, and their cones. And they're all going to have kind of um, slightly different bark, needles, and cones to be able to look at. So let's, uh, let's go through each for the Coast Redwood. I have some examples around me, but because I have to end the live stream in order to actually show you what me... Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up some pictures here. So you can see the coast redwood bark. It's kind of ropey. It's very fibrous. It's resistant to burning. Um, and when you're looking at kind of the whole length of the tree, it looks like almost these big cords going up and down the whole length of the tree. Um, their needles are relatively dense together. And they're in flat splays. So here we've got the needles. Um, you can see they're relatively flat. They grow along the branch and um, relatively close together. And then they get the cones growing down at the ends of each of these branches. And here I'll show you one of the cones are relatively small for these redwoods. Um, these are the tallest of the three. The coast redwood is the tallest of the tree, growing up to nearly 400 feet. 
this is a good picture of their cones here. So they're relatively small. They're about the size of the olive of an olive. And then their seeds are about the size of tomato seeds. So can you imagine an olive sized cone with tomato seed sized seeds growing into the tallest trees in the world, 400 feet in the air? Pretty incredible. So that is Coast Redwoods bark <laughs> needles and cones. Let's move on to um, the giant sequoia. This is the other species. Uh, well, while we're still talking about coast redwoods, I wanted to show you. I just closed it out. Never mind. Um, let's go back over here. Let's go here. Oh, I did have it here. Awesome. Okay. So what I wanted to show you while we were talking about the coast redwood is um, I was talking about each of these are a representative, the only existing representative of their genus. So the genus for um, our coast redwoods being sequoia. So Wikipedia is a great place for getting kind of started in um, how things are related and learning a little bit about taxonomy. So what I found really interesting here with the genus of sequoia, it not only has sequoia sempervirin, the coast redwood, the ever living evergreen, but it has also its extinct relatives listed here. It has a little bit of information on one of them, not a whole lot of information on a lot of them, but just interesting to see that we have um, five other different species that are known that are extinct today, and Sequoia sempervirin being the only existing species of Sequoia today. Now again, there's other types of redwood trees, but they're not related at that genus level. They're related at the subfamily level, a little bit more distantly related. It's like rather than being your direct sibling, it's more like your cousin. Okay. Next, let's move on. Giant sequoias. Awesome. So these are found um, a little bit more inland, like I said, around the Sierra Nevadas. If you've ever gone to um, like big trees, Calveras, these are the kind of redwoods that you're seeing there. Um, their bark is a little bit more red than the coast redwoods. The coast redwoods are kind of more of a chocolatey color. These are more of a bright reddish color. It's still got that ropey and fibrous bark, but it's got a lot more kind of brilliant colors, this light red. Um, now, these trees are the have the largest biomass out of the three. So these are technically the biggest of the three trees that we're looking at, but not necessarily the tallest. That's because these trees just grow um, an enormous, enormously thick. They can be um, really massive on the ground, but they don't grow as tall as the coast redwood trees do. So let's take a look. Um, that's their bark. Let's take a look at their needles and um, how we can how much how different do these look from the coast redwood needles? Let's see. Uh, this is a, I don't have a lot of good pictures of the needles here. This is a decent picture of the needles. This is more close up on the cones. You can see in the background, the needles for the um, giant sequoia are a lot kind of denser packed together than they are for the coast redwood. Um, their needles don't fan out as much. It's funny, I searched for giant sequoia and the very first picture to come up is a coast redwood. So their needles are a lot more compacted together. Now let's check out their cones. Their cones are quite a bit bigger than the coast redwood cones. Um, they're more kind of the size of an egg rather than the size of an olive. They still have a similar pattern, but they're significantly bigger. Excellent. I'm going to peek back over here and see how we're doing with our comments. Clear here, refresh, Pacific Coast Tree Finder. Awesome, awesome. I'll come back here and, and read the comments when we get closer to the end, actually. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in and um, for commenting. I really appreciate it. I'm going to come through all the questions when we get close to the end here. Um, and I'm sorry, you guys might just have this endless, endless stream of windows here. Okay, so let's move on to the Dawn Redwood. And the Dawn Redwood, one of the things that I find the most interesting about this is that despite it being in the same family with the cypress trees, these evergreen um, conifers, cone-bearing trees, the dawn redwood is actually deciduous. So here's a picture of a dawn redwood um, around the fall. They actually drop all of their needles um, at, a, at different times, uh, at, at a time of the year. And I was reading a little bit about that. I didn't get it fully fleshed out, but the adaptation um, is because in the places that it grows naturally experience less, um, they have much shorter days during the winter. So because there is so much um, less likely to really get the sun that they need, they'll drop their needles and just kind of hibernate for those months rather than focusing on trying to grow and produce cones and things like that. So this is an adaptation and is very different from its other relatives in the way that it 
it changes color during the seasons and actually drops all of those needles. I thought it was incredibly interesting that there is a deciduous conifer. It's almost counterintuitive. This is one of the exceptions to the rules. Evergreen trees are supposed to remain evergreen all year long, and this redwood drops its needles. So that's something that makes it really unique, really special, and really different from the other two. Additionally, its range is in China. It's in a completely different area than the other two, um, than the other trees. I was doing a little bit of research um, as to how these species interacted and came about in, in the fossil record. And I was reading one theory that there is hybridization going on between these different species. So at one point in time, um, different representatives from these genuses were all growing around the same areas and had potential to cross pollinate and create hybridizations. There was one theory that the coast redwood that we have here is actually a hybrid of the giant sequoia and the dawn redwood. Um, part of the difficulty with that is an incomplete fossil record and not necessarily knowing where all of these species start, stop, end, and stop to exist. So it's not a fully solved scientific puzzle, puzzle, and that is some of my favorite, is when science is still trying to figure something out. They don't know all the way. But it's absolutely beautiful to see a bright red conifer. So let's see if we can get a good picture of the metasequoia bark, the dawn redwood bark. It's a lot less kind of ropey or fibrous than the, um, than the others. It still has kind of that rope factor, but it's a lot toned down, and it almost looks more scaly rather than ropey of the other trees. doesn't look like there's a lot of good examples in the images here. Their needles are um, pretty similar to the coast redwood, except for that they, of course, change color during the seasons, and they're kind of softer and further splayed out, so they're not quite as close together or as dense as the coast redwood. Another really cool thing about the coast redwood that I don't know if the dawn redwood does this, but the coast redwood actually has um, different needles between the bottom of the tree and the top. Their needles towards the bottom look more like the dawn redwood, and their needles towards the top look more like the giant sequoia, where they're tighter packed together. And that's because the needles at the top of the tree are getting blasted full force with the sun, so they don't need to be as splayed open in order to absorb that sun. The needles towards the bottom need to be as open as possible to absorb as much sun as possible, and also because their needles help in um, accessing the fog that the redwoods depend on. Coast redwoods need to be in a foggy environment, and that's a huge part of how they get their water. Back to dawn redwoods, let's check out their cones. Awesome. So the big difference that I noticed kind of between um, the dawn redwood cones and the other ones, these are still relatively small, probably about the size of the coast redwood, maybe a little bit bigger than an olive, but they have kind of a wrap, uh, a kind of wrapped around look to them where um, the, the coast redwood has these really kind of evenly spaced um, chunks once their cone opens. The dawn redwoods are a little bit more elongated and almost look like they wrap, excuse me, almost look like they wrap around the cone. All right, so we've got the three different species. We've got our coast redwoods. Let's go back over to images. We've got our giant sequoias. We'll make these go back to images. And we've got our Don Redwoods. Make this go back to images. So, recapping. For Coast Redwoods, we have splayed out um, needles. We've got kind of a chocolatey, ropey bark. And we've got these small olive-like cones with kind of almost symmetrical uh, pattern broken apart. The giant sequoias got that rich red bark. Um, it's the densest of the three, the thickest of the three trees. It's got really tightly packed needles in the biggest cones out of the three. And the dawn redwood is deciduous, meaning it changes um, colors and loses its leaves at different times of the year. It's got kind of the least dramatic bark, the least ropey looking bark. Um, it's got softer needles and kind of twisty looking cones. So here is your, here is your test. I've got A, B, and C. We've got three examples here um, of these are the three different redwood species. So which one do you think is which? And if you guys want to just put this in the comments um, on for the, for the live stream, I would love to hear your answers between the giant sequoia, the coast redwood, the dawn redwood. Which one do you think is which of these three? At A, B, and C, you can just put, you know, A is this one, B is that one, C is that one. If you're playing along, it's up to you. But I do really like this image in the way that it shows the difference between all three. And we'll come back to this because it's just a really nice um, 
really nice representation. So let me hop back over here. Let's see how we're doing. Excellent. All right, I'm going to go all the way up to the top, go through our comments here while you guys are thinking about that. Um, <laughs> yes, the endless tunnel of live streams is a little trippy. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in today. Really appreciate it. Yes, uh, both Kim and Bud and probably others have noticed that there is a Don Redwood planted at um, the Humboldt Redwoods Visitor Center and occasionally at Redwood Visitor Centers. They will plant um, two or all three of the species together. And it's really interesting to see all of them growing together because it really makes it clear um, the difference between them. So if you do ever have a chance to see them growing together, it's pretty spectacular. But do know um, naturally that these three species have very different ranges. The coast redwoods growing on the coast of California, the giant sequoias growing inland in the Sierra Nevadas, and the um, dawn redwoods growing in China. One up by Jed Smith. Bears peel off bark on the redwoods in long strips. They sure do, Kim. Screen looking blurry. I'm so sorry. Um, hopefully once it's published, it'll look a little bit cleaner. So fortunate in California to have these two different types of trees, and it's just incredible to see them. Some The tallest trees and some of the biggest trees in the world. Some of the oldest trees. These trees can live almost 3,000 years. It's not the oldest tree, but that's a pretty old tree. Pacific Coast Tree Finder is a fun, inexpensive posset guide to bring on a trip to the Redwoods and identify the trees. Great suggestion, Carolyn. I love it. Clear here. Refresh. Are all equally harvested for lumber, my mother would like to know. Um, that is a good question. From what I have read, Coast Redwoods were hit the hardest in logging. It was said um, in the early, you know, the early times of California when they were doing a huge amount of building, um, especially in San Francisco, that Coast Redwoods were used heavily for this. The old growth... Redwoods being um, kind of seen as this endless harvestable supply of wood. It was said that at one time you could make 20 houses out of a single old growth redwood tree. So I know that that is a huge reason that their range is reduced today, that they only grow in 4% of their historic range, is largely due to that, um, largely due to that deforestation and that logging early in California. Coast Redwood is shown in Disney's The No Mobile which is set in Humboldt. Super fun movie. Oh, very interesting, Robin. I might have to check that out. I know about the no movies, but I did not know that they took place in Humboldt. That's tons of fun. Coast Redwoods are harvested for lumber. Giant sequoias are not. Not sure about John Redwoods. Good question. Don Redwoods um, are the smallest of the three species. Um, they only get to about uh, 100 feet tall compared to the um, Coast Redwoods, which get you know up over 300 feet almost 400 feet tall. So um, I know that Coast Redwoods were heavy hit for logging, um, but I'm not I'm not sure about the um, Don Redwood. And thank you for clarifying that, Kim. I didn't know about giant sequoias, um, but I don't know how much they were used for lumber. I know part of the reason that the Coast Redwoods do make such good lumber is because they fragment basically into boards because of the way that their bark is organized in those long strips that they, they turn them into boards for building houses really easily. Don Redwoods planted along the streets in U.S. Midwest. That's really interesting. That would definitely be a sight to see. Henry Caldwell has a Don Redwood. Yes, you will definitely see them planted around. I've even seen some planted at elementary schools. It's very interesting. Have redwood trees in your backyard. Awesome. few blocks from the ocean. Yes, coast redwoods love um, growing, along the, the, um, growing along the coast. Um, that is the only place that they occur, and a large part of that is because they need that fog but they won't grow too close to the coast because they are intolerant of salt spray. So salt water spraying up off of the ocean. Um, they don't like that. So they don't grow right along the ocean, um, but they need the fog coming off the ocean. So we've got A, Giant, B, Coast, C, Don. Great guesses. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think most of you guys got it down. Coast Raider would grow differently if planted in hot, dry climates. You would definitely see difference in the um, trees where they're planted. Coast Redwoods thrive here because they have everything they need. Um, I, I am sure that you would see some difference. Let's see. Kim has a great... Oh, thank you, Kim, for doing that additional research. I really appreciate it. The wood from huge old-growth giant sequoia trees does not make good lumber, despite its resistance to decay because it is brittle and has little strength. Nevertheless, sequoias were logged in 1870s for their wood used in fence posts and shake shingles. Very interesting, Kim. So the giant sequoia's wood is not as strong or durable 
as the coast redwood. And that is one of the reasons that the coast redwood was harvested, um, potentially a lot more, but not to say that giant sequoias were never used for building. So excellent. All right, so I see we got a couple of guesses here. We're gonna go back into our image right here. And I think those of you who guessed were right. A is the giant sequoia, B is the coast redwood, and C is the dawn redwood. Um, you can see the really tightly packed needles here um, and the kind of larger looking cone. Egg size, you've got the um, tightly packed together needles for the coast redwood, but they're all splayed out to make sure that they're catching that sun. You can see towards the end uh, bottom here where it kind of starts to pack tightly back in together. That's kind of what the needles would look like more towards the top of the tree where they're getting more sun. And then you got the dawn redwood with its kind of windy looking cones and it's kind of more spaced out needles. Awesome, 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 you guys. Great guesses. Thank you so much for playing along and taking my little test. Um, Kim, thank you so much for... You perpetually do that extra little piece of research for me during the live stream, so I absolutely appreciate that. Um, thank you so much for following along and being that resource. It's so awesome to have the answer popped into the comments before I can even finish reading the question. That's spectacular. And I'll definitely check out this resource that you've posted in here as well. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. I'm not going to put this back on me because I have to end the live stream. But I do thank you guys all so much for joining and thank you so much for keeping up with our live streams. I really appreciate you guys continuing to tune in and support these. Um, I know this was a little bit um, different than what we had been doing. Um, I didn't intend for it to only be able to screen share, but alas, um, that's, that's what we had today. So thank you guys so much for tuning in playing along. Thanks for um, bearing with us on testing out some of this technology and doing some different things. Uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow. We've got Skip coming out to Prairie Creek Redwoods. He will be on this time. He's got some help coming out with him. So those of you guys who were tuning in last week had a little bit of technical difficulties. He will be back. He will be back. Never fear. Tune in tomorrow, three o'clock. Check out his live stream. Tune in every day to see different interpreters in different parks. And we really appreciate you guys um, checking this out. It means a lot to have your support. So thank you guys all again so much for tuning in. And with that, We'll be done. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.